Okay. The execute. Hmm. Burr. You got control seed. Took too long. Dear PowerShell, why are you sometimes so slow? Oh, what an unexpected answer. So have fun in the shell. Even errors can be fun. Welcome back to the PS Admin channel. My name is Mark, the PowerShell Admin. And uh, the full title of today's episode is, is Hash Tables in PowerShell are rad and you should learn them. Even you. Um, yes, you, the beginning Windows Admin. One of the strengths of PowerShell is that the built-in commandlets are extremely flexible and robust. That means that you usually don't need to download or write a new commandlet to take care of essential tasks. Uh, text files, WMI, the registry, it's all straightforward. But once you have that foundation with the built-in commandlets, you soon realize that a lot of your scripts and day-to-day -day tasks don't scale very well um, to larger data sets, unless you also learn to utilize uh, some foundational .NET classes. So today, let's look at hash tables, a class that is used widely within PowerShell and for good reason. Hash tables are simple to use and they can greatly speed up working with large data sets. Any uh, operations you have like uh, joining, uh, reformatting, sorting large data sets, et cetera, these are all, can be, all be sped up greatly using hash tables. Uh, to help illustrate where they shine, what we're gonna do is create some play data and compare a simple operation on that data with and without power, uh, with and without PowerShell hash tables. When I say PowerShell hash tables, they're really the same um, just that .NET uses. You have those objects available to you, um, but in this case, it's in a PowerShell context. Um, let's start here by creating some play data. What I'm gonna do is copy this into the console and then I'll explain what I'm doing here. Um, you know what, Kloopy, we're going to temporarily banish you. So we're gonna create two collections of 500 lines each. Uh, as you see, collection one, uh, in each line it has a name, which is a random string, a random globally unique string, and then it has a number one value, and that's any number from one to 200 randomly selected. And then there's a second collection that has those same strings for the name value. So there's a, a unique identifier that you can join these two data sets on but they have a different, one of them has a number one value and one of them has a number two value and those numbers are different in each collection. So what we're doing is we're creating this play data because we want to join it um, like we might in uh, for creating a report. Um, for instance, you might have uh, a request to generate reports from all the computers in Active Directory and then join that to uh, say your asset, your IT asset management's list of the computer names and when their warranties expire or some other, um, maybe the cost of the computer. So you can see how much, um, what the expense is that's out there being used by you know different departments. Um, hopefully you're not doing that after the fact in your organization, but I don't know. The way that we can do, we might do this uh, initially as a beginning admin would be using where object. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how uh, that construction might look. We're gonna create this resultant collection that has the string name, uh, that unique identifier, and then both the number one value from the first collection, which is what we're starting with, and it's going to look up the number two value for that same name 
from the second collection and create this new collection. Um, there we go. So you'll see that didn't take too terribly long, um, although it's not really very complicated. To get an idea of uh, the performance of this operation, we're going to use a, a command that I really like called measure command. What it does is it tells you how long it takes to run whatever you put after it in the curly braces, whatever script you supply. So in this case, with these two 500 item lists that are basically, it's partly the same data that we're joining together, it took about 2.4 seconds, 2.4, 2.5 seconds. Um, now let's see how long it takes if we do 1,000 item lists. All right, so we've got that X value, or that X variable, by the way, defined how large the collections were. You can see I started up here with 500. Actually creating that coll those collections doesn't take very long. And then the really nice thing about um, working in the console is I can just use the buffer history here, or the command history. And since we have a new, new values for collection one and collection two, um, the same script applies, and then we can see how long it takes to go from 500 items to 1,000 items. And we're waiting. So that's 9.4 seconds to, to join those two collections together. So as you can see, if you double the list size, double the size of the unique identifiers here, um, it's actually quadrupling the time that it takes. Um, whereas you might expect that it would also double it, but it's well, sort of a, it's, it's an exponential growth in expense. Um, so that's something that you can see doesn't really scale very well. Sometimes we'll put up with uh, long inefficient scripts if it's something that we only need to run once or we only need to, we can schedule it and let it run for an hour um, before you come into work, right? But it's not something that you really want to be doing um, if you're adding to, uh, if you're creating a command line to run from the command line or if you're if you want something to be um, available earlier or you're just going to be adding more scheduled tasks, you really, that kind of inefficiency, you don't want to um, perpetuate. And also, you don't know, you might end up with two or three times as many computers to where the point where you just can't get that operation done in time. And so that's not a very efficient way to do it. Uh, so this actually is where hash tables shine. And so let's define a hash table. A hash table is an unsorted collection of key value pairs. Um, and so I think you know what unsorted is, but what's a key value pair? Um, well, a key can be thought of as any unique identifier so that there's only one of each instance of the key can appear in that hash table. And the value is really any arbitrary value. Uh, you can think of it like the index in the back of a book. Uh, you have these uh, these keywords, and it could be a topic or a word that appears, and then you'll have the list of page numbers of all the places that either that word appears or that topic is covered. So a hash table is very similar to that. When you have this key value, it tells you it immediately shows you what you need. Um, except unlike uh, the index in a book, it's not just uh, page numbers or um, you know lists of pages or page ranges. It could be anything. It could be a string or an, an integer. It could be a collection of strings or integers or assorted objects. Um, it could be binary data. It could be a bitmap. Uh, there's, there's really no practical limit to the type of object that you can store in a hash table. And what makes this very powerful is it's extremely fast to look up by that key. It's not going through a list and checking each value. It has a very efficient algorithm. Or jumping straight to the um, the pointer for that that particular uh, key. So in PowerShell, the hash table is represented by an at sign, and then two curly braces, and inside key equals value. And the reason that I put value in quotes is because the value actually has to be type has to be cast to the the appropriate type. The key it can understand or it can cast as a string. Um, so as you can see, in this case, the key is actually key and the value is actually value. And it'll refer to the key as the name, but key is, I think, a better um, and easier technical term to, to identify what um, component of the hash table that is. 
well, let's copy in um, a, actually, you know what? We did not call it go-go hash tables. We called it hash tables part one. That's the short title. And the full episode title is not avoiding the where object trap because where object is extremely powerful. It is hash tables. Um, you know what? We're just going to call it hash tables are cool because I don't want to copy it. Up. I don't want to go up the exact name. Back to this. So we created a an arbitrary hash table here. Um, so it's a, an at sign with curly braces and then a key equals value. And then you can add multiple key value pairs at the same time by either separating them by new lines, uh, as I've done here, or by semicolons. To reference or to look up the value of a key, you put the key in square braces. So title is admin. And if we use get member on that, we'll see that it is storing it as a string. But if we did, let me see, what do we call it? Episode number. We look up the episode number, we'll see that it's stored it as an integer. So whatever we're putting in there as the value, it's gonna, it doesn't have to be all the same. It's not like an array where it's all the same kinds of, or all the same types of data. It can be um, assorted data. Okay. Let's look at, um, let's look at how much faster that uh, particular, this result uh, creation where we're splicing those two data sets together. Let's see how much faster hash tables could make this for us. So we're gonna start by creating an index object that we're actually gonna use in place of the collection two. So we create an index object. F Oops, not clear history, although. Um, okay, so we're creating an, an empty hash table called index, and then for each line in collection two, we are adding or adding a, as a key the name string, and then as a value number two. And so, hey. Um, actually, no, I need to know what to look up first. So let's look up All right, so if I wanted to look up this particular item, it's gonna show me the value for number two in that, in that collection two. And then we're gonna create the result object in this way without using where object. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of similar. So we start out by creating a new object that has both of the attributes of collection one, which is the name and the number one. And then we use that index uh, hash table to populate the value of number two. So when we get to the one that has this particular name, it's going to have that value. And I don't know if you could tell, but that was quite a bit faster than it took us using the where object method. So let's actually quantify all this and see how much, how long it's taking. Um, all you know I need to do is, so I, I told you that the index um, or the hash table has only has to have a unique key. You get errors if you try to put the same key in twice. So to avoid that, I am going to, all right, bear with me just a moment here. All right, so the, the full operation that we're, um, full operation that we're running here and we're measuring as the creation of the index, uh, the population of it using uh, collection two, and then combining that with uh, collection one for the result variable. So let's go ahead, see how long it took. Okay, so that took about 0.35 seconds. Now, if you remember, it was well over nine seconds to do it with where objects. So this is a much faster and importantly, it's more scalable method for uh, combining the data sets. Essentially what you're doing here is you're creating your own 
mini relational database with that index um, so that it has a very fast way to come to pull uh, the data for those unique identifiers anyhow thank you so much for watching the video uh, in part two with hash tables we'll look at select object because if hash tables are rad and select object is rad then using select object and hash tables together is super rad Take care.